Hi everybody, my name is Jen, I'm an alcoholic. I've been through the process with the help. Can you all hear me in the back okay? A little closer. It feels so loud sitting up here, that's why. Um, I've been through the process with the help of a big book step study sponsor, meetings like this, people like you, a very patient and loving higher power, who I met largely through doing this work. Not largely, who I met through doing this work. Um, I've made my amends, um, and I'm doing the latter steps on a daily basis to the best of my ability and willingness. <sighs> God, this yeah. So, um, I don't enjoy speaking because um, I get full of fear when I speak. And when I am full of fear about something, my character defects kick in. So it's appropriate that I'm talking about character defects today. Um, and my inclination is to just uh, not talk because I'm afraid that you will think that I'm dumb um, or that I'm not good enough, right? Um, so, so I wanted to just throw that out there um, and, and be honest with you because the, this is one way in which character defects show up in my life today. Um, and, you know, I, I, I say the seventh step prayer every morning um, because, and I'm going to talk a lot about fear today because as the book tells us, and, and the, the 12 and 12 mentions this too, the chief activator of my character defects is self-centered fear. Um, and so I can't talk about defects without talking about fear, because anytime I'm full of fear, my character defects get tickled. Um, they come out to play if I let them, if I don't go to God with them. Um, so, um, so in doing the writing, to just hop back for a second, in doing the writing, um, in step four, and discovering the patterns of my behavior, um, which uh, all revolved around fear, I learned a lot about my character defects. I, over and over again, through my writing and then the reading of it in step five, saw the way, my, the way fear operated in my life, which then allowed, again, allowed my character defects to come out and play over and over and over again. Um, and by the time I had finished the writing, and certainly by the time I had finished step five, I was so sick of my behavior that I was absolutely willing to have God remove all of my character defects. Absolutely, without a doubt. They were not serving me. Um, and the thing about character defects is... At least this is true in my experience. They are instincts that are gone way off the rails. And so they are things like pride, right? It's important to have pride. It's natural. It's natural to have fear. Um, I take pride in the work that I do. If I didn't, that would be a miserable experience to slog through a 10-hour work, 10, 10 workday, five days a week, sometimes six days a week. Um, so it's important that I take pride in things. It's when my pride gets all screwy, gets out of whack, that it becomes a defect, that it becomes a problem, that it stands in the way of my usefulness to God and to you. Um, and so... As an alcoholic, I am not good with moderation. So when I'm talking about instincts um, or learned behaviors that have served me in the past that have gone awry and have become character defects, really what I'm talking about is, is right-sizedness, right, -sizedness, right? Um, and moderation. And, and I'm not good with moderation. I've never been good with moderation. I drank like a pig. Um, when, I, when I stopped drinking, but before I had gone through the work of the steps, I realized, um, and I never understood this when I first came in, um, that, that my alcoholism was about more than alcohol, right? Like I never understood that until I gained some clarity and realized that when I put the bottle down, 
I was still looking for external solutions to my internal problems. And so I would eat a whole, you've all heard me talk about my ability to like eat a whole row of Oreos, right? Like um, <laughs> if I get depressed or if I'm anxious, right? Like it's, you know, I can do that. Shopping, um, relationships have been historically a problem for me. Um, so so when, by the time we get to step seven, I really understand this idea of humility and trying to be right-sized and trying to, to get in that sweet spot. Um, so let me just go back real quick to um, step six. And I want to read to you some of the character defects that came out of my work. I can't say no to people. I can't set healthy boundaries. Uh, I am afraid to try new things because I'm afraid to fail. So that's related to fear, but it, what it, the, the character defect is that I, I sit in, in comfort. Uh, I avoid confrontation. I can hold on to a grudge or a resentment like nobody's business if I'm not careful. I blame others when I'm full of fear um, I, by pointing fingers. I'm impulsive and impatient. I want what I want and I want it yesterday. I seek the approval of others for a sense of, of self-worth. I don't communicate because if I communicate, I'm afraid of meeting your disapproval. I'm a people pleaser. Uh, I love, I love, and this, this is especially true the longer I've been sober, I love self-righteous anger. Um, that was never a problem for me when I was drinking because uh, I, 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 I didn't really get angry. I was so anesthetized that like, I, was, I never got angry unless you tried to take my alcohol away. Um, but you know, I, the longer I've been sober, you start to, well, for me, I start to adopt new character defects um, <laughs> or they pop up in ways um, that I hadn't seen them before and self-righteous anger is absolutely one of them. Um, so that... Um, and usually when I'm engaging in self-righteous anger, uh, I then um, gossip um, as a, a form of character assassination. I'm passive aggressive, judgmental, I'm avoidant, I play God. And then um, I engage in, in something that I heard, I heard at a meeting a few weeks ago and I just thought it was so brilliant. Nothing I say is original, by the way. This is all, like, in the big book. This is all things I've heard from you. I stand on the shoulders of giants, and I am humble enough to say that. I, this, is, this is all you. So if you don't like what I have to say, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I heard this at a meeting a few weeks ago, and I just thought it was great. And the person was talking about this in relation to step 11 and doing the work at night of taking their, their inventory. But they were talking about the five C's. And I just thought this was so great that I use it all the time now. So the five C's are control, compete, compare, criticize, complain. Those are, yeah, you bet. Control, so I try to control people, play God. Compete, compare, criticize, gossip, complain. So that's a short list of some of my character defects. I have a lot of them. Um, and again, they, 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 they come out when I'm full of fear. So. For me, it's important. For me, it's important um, to continually recognize my character defects, and new ones do pop up, um, so that I can ask God every morning to remove them, but also so that I can recognize them before they come out. Um, and so, for example, if I'm going about my day, and I'm at work, and um, someone says or does something that agitates me, and in particular agitates my fear that either um, I'm, I'm not good enough in my job, let's just stick with that one for the example, 
Um, I then usually engage in self-righteous anger and have the ability to start to gossip and character assassinate so that I can feel better about myself, right? It's important for me to recognize those behaviors because if someone is pushing my buttons at work, I can stop myself. If I'm aware of my character defects, I can stop myself before I engage them, right? And I can instead pause and say, God, please remove this, or God, please help. Or just pause and say, God, right? Um, because if, and, and here's, here's how the character defects, here's how the character defects prevent me from being of maximum use to God and to others. If I engage in gossip, um, if I start to character assassinate somebody, essentially what I'm doing is taking a coworker aside and pouring poison into their ear. Um, that is not helpful. Um, it's not, it doesn't make me feel good at the end of the day when I'm taking, doing my inventory. Um, I will probably have to do some form of, um, of an amends. Um, not probably, I will have to do some form of an amends. Um, but I am just, I am just like creating a pile of mess, of poison, of, of poop really, um, that I am forcing someone else to sit in and engage with me. And that is not useful, that is not productive. Um, and what's worse is it becomes, I think, cyclical, right? Like, you know, trauma bonding is a real thing at work, um, and, I, and I think it has its uses and places, but if you just sit in trauma bonding, you're sitting in a, a little hamster wheel and nothing productive ever gets done. And that's the strange thing about character defects. Um, you know, it's, I, always say, I always tell this story that when I first came into AA, um, you know, I walked into the halls and, and the meeting I surrendered in was a, a meeting that was a five day a week meeting. And a, when I walked in the door, a woman opened her arms to me and gave me a hug. And nobody was doing that to me by the, by the end of my drinking, nobody. Um, but this woman did. And at the end of the meeting, she said to me, I'll see you tomorrow, really hopefully, right? Um, and my character defect of people pleasing and not wanting to disappoint saved my butt. It really saved my bacon um, because even if I didn't want to go the next day or the day after that, the next day was fairly easy for me to get there. But like the third day, I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, I went because I wanted to people please. And so there are moments, right? And, and I, now I'm going back to um, instincts or learned behaviors that are useful but get out of whack. And that's what gets me in trouble. Um, so that character defect was useful to me in that moment. Um, but if it gets out of whack, if I people please by not saying no and not setting healthy boundaries, then I start to cop a resentment. And we, we all know about resentments, that the number one offender, they'll take us out, right? Um, and so it's, it's that lack of proportion of things um, that really gets me into trouble with regard to character defects. And so it's all about humility. It's all about ego puncturing. And that's the heart of step seven. Um, I need to go to God and ask every morning to be right-sized. Because as alcohol, as, I'll speak for me, as an alcoholic, prior to doing this work, I either was full of like an inflated sense of self, I'm the best, but more often than not, it was I'm the worst human to ever walk this earth and I don't know why I'm bothering taking air away from you, right? Um, which is just another form of, e of ego. It's, it's, you're just, it's all engaging in ego. It's all sitting in self. Um, and so I have to ask to be right-sized. And if I'm right-sized, and if my ego has been leveled, then it's usually a good day for me. And it's usually a day where even if someone pushes my buttons, I can realize either... It's not really about me, right? If I've got a, I, I work in, in, um, in a university and I have a lot of angry parents who come talk to me for some reason. 
<laughs> they get sent to me. It's not for some vague reason. They get sent to me. Um, and they will just lay, start laying into me. And I had to learn that it's not about me. They're full of fear about their kid. Right? It's, none of it is about me. It doesn't make it any easier or better when they're like attacking me. Um, but but it, I guess, suppose it does make it a little bit easier, but it doesn't make it feel any better. Um, I am able to say, this person is full of fear, or this is a sick person too, or this person is having a bad day, or you know what, even if it is about me, I can't do anything about it. It's all about acceptance. I can't control how you think of me, right? Um, and so, so I've, 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 been th I've shared this at a meeting earlier this week. I've been thinking a lot about humility and, and its importance in, in my life, certainly, because it's, it, it's giving me a sense of perspective and allowing me to... Allowing, just allowing me to be a more useful, a better human, um, and allowing me to do for other people. Um, and so I think... Um, I think that's all I wanted to say about character defects. Um, I think the only other thing that I'll mention is for me, um, in, in, in listing my character defects and occasionally reminding myself about them and in saying the seventh step prayer, um, why it's important for me to catch these things and not indulge in my character defects is because they are often cascading. Like it's like a domino effect. Um, one character defect leads to another character defect, leads to another, leads to another, and then suddenly stuff comes out sideways. Um, and so, um, so this work is this work has saved my life, um, but more importantly, this work has made my life better than I could have ever imagined. When I came in, I wanted to put the bottle down. I didn't think I had to do anything else. Um, and then I realized how, how sick I was, how twisted and demented and, and, and not well I was. Um, and I think the reminder for me is, if I'm not on my game, if there's a morning where I'm too busy to do my things that I do, to pray, to do my readings in the morning, um, those are not fun days for me, emotionally. I'm emotionally imbalanced. Um, and that helps me realize the importance of doing these steps. So wherever you are in this work, please keep going. It is hard work, although it's not as hard as drinking. It is not as hard as drinking, I promise you. The hiding the bottles, the trying to remember the lie you told to X, y, X person, but the different lie you told to Y person. So wherever you are in this work, keep doing it, um, because it's worth it, and so are you. Thank you for listening. Wow.